Now, I, I think uh, he's just so damaging. I reckon Joel Selwood's going to get his 20-plus possessions week in, week out, regardless of who you put on it. Set to go. Got a real feeling about it this game. And previous oh. games have been sensational with a real buzz attached to them. And this one here, full house at Patterson Stadium. There is Crowley and Johnson, if that's a sign of things to come. Watch out. Clark. Rivers did well. Now Hill. Back on his non-preferred side. And the kick to the man of the moment, Matthew Pavlich. What a start this would be. And what a great uh, fourth set up the Dockers had at that first centre bounce. They opened it right up. They only had three players inside 50, one of them being Pavlich. Plenty of move to, plenty of room to lead into. He was just trying to work out whether it's the drop punt or the right foot banana or the run around left. But he's stuck with the drop punt. Wouldn't be seeing a lot of daylight from there. Kicks only 30 metres if boy talk about getting the purple haze up and about if this is good have a listen to this unbelievable Matthew Pavlich has caused everyone to rise as one you couldn't have scripted a better start game 300 the superstar that's where they kick a lot of balls there's the family dad Steve there at the back a little smile from uh, from the family and this is where they kick a lot of them from Rich I think Last thing they do before they exit the track yeah. here is have pot shots from here. And he, he was really comfortable, wasn't he? As soon as he lined up the drop punt, he thought it was home. Yeah, he would have kicked a lot of goals from that pocket in his time. But they've just opened their forward line up beautifully here, the Fremantle Dockers. And a good setup. Plenty of room for Pav and the rest of the forward line to move in. Ballantyne and Zach Clark are down there with him. Ah, he joins the club of those that have had 3,666 kicks and kicked 598 goals. 599 now, looking for 600 goals. Simpson over the top. So Geelong's first 4A forward, an opportunity for them. As Kelly sees it wide, he's under fierce pressure though from Spur. And now an opportunity. Subin wide to Zach Clark. Just to see Zach Clark start in the goal square. Poor kick from him. He's going to go out of bounds. But they really are looking to find another option, as you said, Richo, to try and help Matty Pavlich out. Monday's not really been out of fire this year. Been playing a bit in defence, uh, as well as Chris Mayne, I should say, is one I was just have my eye on at the moment. So, yeah, Chris Mayne just came onto the ground for Zach Clark. Here yeah, the umpire then say to the boundary umpire, was that touched? Because I think it probably was out of bounds on the full Tommy Sheridan, and I think got his toe on it. And we can see that Guthrie has the job on the most dangerous free o midfielder in that five. And Crowley to Johnson. Barlow around the corner. Main over the top. Mackey through traffic. Dewey Mackey back in the Geelong lineup this week. Rivers wrapped up by a couple. One of those was Sheridan. The other Barlow. To the tackle pressure looks on early from the Freo Dockers. It's dropped a little bit this year, BT, their pressure. But remember right this game tonight. last year, it was exactly like this, Richo. Yeah. The tackle pressure was unbelievable. It was. And I'm thinking it's going to be the same again. Barlow, Pavlich, one-out battle with Taylor. Off-hands, Mazungu. Two goals in two minutes for the Fremantle Dockers. Fantastic start. Unbelievable. Yeah. You always talk about trying to silence the crowd in the state. It's the opposite, isn't it? They are out of their chairs and going nuts. Yeah, they're very loud, this uh, Patterson Stadium crowd, and it's full tonight, obviously, with Pav's 300th game, and couldn't have asked for a better start. Aaron Sandilands had a huge influence in that final down in Geelong last year at forward stoppages. Again there, knocking it down to Michael Barlow, and that's what caused the quick entry and the goal for Mzungu. They're going to have to make sure Dawson Simpson's the man that Aaron Sandilands cannot influence tonight's game. Unusual start this for the Cats. They've managed to kick the first goal in every game they've played this year, and all of a sudden they're two down as their superstar dashes forward. And gee, that's a good overhead mark from Bartel. It was a good mark, but Dash, you're pointing that the kick was outstanding. I've never seen a player be able to kick across his body as well. So we have a look at it again here. He's just put that perfectly out to the fat side for Jimmy Bartel. 
was a ripper, Das. You can't describe how good that is at full pace, sprinting out of the centre. Could not have placed that any better across his body. Did not have to change stride. Now Bartella, big time tap player. This one off the side of the right boot. And there's some real passion and electricity in this ground tonight. So Duffield, that way to the wing, Hill on his favoured left side, beautiful little presentation, what a pick up from Pavlich, got out of the loop here, Subin, goes back in deep, once again under pressure, the Caps defenders here, enormous pressure, Hall and Smith has to be clean and he was, he was super clean, Maine hasn't given up the chase though, and Fremantle up and about. They're getting some transition, really quick ball movement from the defensive half into the forward half. I reckon Subin nearly could have given a handball over to Pierce and he could have run through 50 and almost had a shot at goal. Simpson and Sandilands at it. Sandilands saw that Mzungu was on the end of it. He nursed it inside 50 over the back. The knife five around the body for three in a row. Oh, Nate, you are good. Yeah, he's better than good, Note 5, he's just a jet. And this is a magnificent start for the Dockers. Right out of the blocks, they would have been pumped for Matty Pavlitz's 300 and they've converted it to three big goals early, Richard. Yeah, what a great crumb, front and square, but then to finish it, off a couple of steps around the corner, he's a jet, Note 5, Sorry, he can do everything. Sorry, yeah. Thanks, Hodge. That is, that is a front and square, isn't it? He just hit it at pace, timed his run perfectly. And then had the finishing uh, class to put around the corner for a nice goal. Quality contest so far. Selwood, a mad bulldog he was there. Hunt didn't quite know what to do with it, but whatever he did was working for the Cats. Now Kelly from Selwood and Motlop on the end of this one. The little one sideways to Stevie J. Looking down the line for McIntosh. Duffield out, did he know, in the body. Lee, you would have seen this group respond in this sort of fashion. The Cats, what do they do now? Obviously try and hold on the ball and maintain possession, but they'll have a set plan here. Well, they've got to slow Fremantle down somehow. Fremantle's ball movement is outstanding at the moment. You know what it reminds me of? Dust round one against Collingwood, where they just came out and hunted Collingwood yep. with every opportunity they could. They took the game on and moved it really fast. Geelong have got to slow that down. Gee, their kicking's good as you say, Lingy. They're on. And that was a great example. How's the hands from Pavlik, though? He was under extreme heat from Harry Taylor. Jukes out in front. Good lesson for the youngsters. There's Sudcliffe involved in last, that last 4 eight forward. Short little ball now to Spur. Missed the target on this occasion. Lonigan tidies up. Simpson out, PT. It is indeed. And it's kicked back into the contest and had to come back and compete. Simpson, if he'd gone the other way, Silvani was cooked. Ground level footy. Guthrie. Has a look at who's chasing him, gives it to Bartel around the body. And normally Jimmy will get on the end of that. Yeah, he won't be happy, Jimmy. He's a, a really accurate kick for goal. He's missed a set shot that you'd back him 9 out of 10. I think right, he's a 9 out of 10 job from there normally too, yeah. around the body, that sort of space. Yeah. Duffield got in front nicely, Silvani. He looked like he was going to be outmaneuvered then, but he's been in and out of this Fremantle side since Ross Lyon arrived. Kick falls in the hands of May. Thank you. May could have gone short to Pavlich. Back inside. And Fremantle just steady. Johnson, have a look at the defenders now. Start to push down the ground. And get involved. Little present up. Kick is good here. She finally fights inside 50 on his own. Hill, short ball. There he is. They eventually got hold of him, Richo. Lonigan got to him somehow. Five. Mundy with the push off. Relieved pressure brilliantly. Gave Johnson some time and space. Yeah. And then to the fat side without accuracy. Blitzars. Poor kick, that one. Blitzars in the right okay, spot. Okay. Fife's hard ball get in close then. It was just extraordinary. One of the best in Ferris last year, Fife. But he's getting better on. and better. Play on. Play on no turning into one of the out and out guns of the competition. Yeah. You mean yeah. there was a year where Matthew Pavlich didn't win a best in Ferris yeah. yeah. Or something.
Not very often. Or, or not get all Australian. He's in there every year as well. Crowley to Hill. Hill through some traffic, fought his way through beautifully. Duffield liking his work so far in this game. Sets up Sutcliffe on the outer side. Now what have they got? Pavlich on the real long lead. That's where it's going to go. Pav and Taylor. Kick to the advantage of Taylor. Pavlich would have, would have wanted it on the boundary side. And Selwood on the counter-attack. Dawson will pick this off. Back into the side for the Fremantle Dockers. Here comes Fife. Crowley tried to keep him running with the footy there. Head over the footy was Buse, the first gamer. There's Selwood, partially decapitated. Good to see the first gamer and Jeb Buse out there. Son of Andrew, of course, came under the father and son. Andrew, a former skipper. The Cats, the Rat, the Andrew rat. Buse. Yep. State player many times. Great player for the Cats. Andrew Buse. Crowley dropped the mark. He probably should have taken. Here's the dangerous Motlop. Dawson put his body in. Duffield with a quick kick, but Selwood's on the end. Little chip kick wide. Hall and Smith. 55 out and closing, and now Bartell is really providing a lot of movement, but he drops the mark. Pierce immediately on him. Back to Hall and Smith. Centering football. Johnson. She's a good intercept marker. Johnson just... It's in the right spots all of the time in that defensive 50. Subin needed to get the jukes out in front there. It was knocked away too easily by Rivers. Tidied up with Sutcliffe and Hill with a neat little kick around the corner to Barlow. Because they really miss Barlow. In the few weeks that he was out injured, he just does that. He provides that great gut run. When they need an outlet, he was the one that had worked harder than his opponent to find the footy. They've been able to do this a little bit too much early in the game. The Dockers, the switch, and then down the other side. Haven't blocked the exits that well so far, the Cats. With really good effect, and gee, they got deep penetration on this occasion. Now, Fife pushed him in the back there. Yeah, it was the right call. He just wanted the kick with a bit more elevation on it, Fife, and he was away, and he just had to infringe there. His two hands in the back had to be a free. Guthrie spearing the ball to Hall and Smith, Guthrie on the outside now, Mackey carefully works it forward, Duncan the target, with him all the way, on that occasion was Walker, uh, sorry was um, Spur so 55 out from the Cats goal 11 minutes blown by and Cats unusually haven't registered one. Mundy, beautiful under the knee handball. Crowley was caught. Thought about Sheridan wide and not in the time required. Duncan, also a low ball. McIntosh got down, had a little bit of trouble picking it up. Gave Sandlin's time to close. Johnson tries to get out of trouble. Guthrie, sneaky handball. Hall and Smith couldn't get on the end of it. Now Neil. So Fremantle tidying up nicely in their defence at the moment and out wide is main Lonigan interfered now they can go to one on ones if they want, instead Mzungu running hard, he and Mackie going at it, Mzungu won the aerial contest, now he's got to be clean at ground level he was, Pierce had to go back and retrieve finds Sheridan, Pierce around the corner to the 300 gamer in Pavlich, back to Sheridan, Kelly got in the way now Mzungu again, putting their head over the footy here at the moment everyone, without exception and Taylor Hunt forced to the line, great pressure by the three Nano Rockers, gee it's a quick game, have a look at this Mzungu, this is a great effort, just got a hand on the footy, kept it going the Dockers way, but just a fast paced game, it's end to end stuff here gee Sandlin's got interfered with then his run was cut, didn't have possession of the footy. Ballantyne around the corner. Snap misses. All clear. So a 17-point Fremantle advantage in the opening you, mate. 14 minutes of this quarter. Blitzars. Dad was a gun basketballer. Motlop over the top. Murdoch on the left. Gee, that's a great kick. Bartell should have gobbled that up. Murdoch said, I'll get it myself. Over the top to Taylor Hunt, holding on with Sutcliffe. 
Little kick through some traffic. Sandlands and Dawson, the two big boys after it in the goal square. And Sandy Lambs did the defensive thing. Yeah, really rare to see a couple of Jimmy Bartell mistakes in a quarter, and he's had a, a few forgettable ones, a couple of little fumbles and, and missed shots. The, the uh, Geelong Ruckman are really trying to work Sandlands over, Richard, get him to the goal square, trying to get him to play full back. But he's a really honest player. He always, when it's his turn to defend, he works as hard defensively as anyone else in the team. Yeah, Simpson really pushed hard down the ground then to make uh, that option in the goal square, but Sandilands matched him. Duncan sends it long. Varco there at the back. Simpson too far back. And that allowed Sandilands. That's a good response, isn't it? Okay, take me back there. <laughs> I'll just take a contested mark. Gone to a two-on-one, though, in favour of the Cats here. And Selwood tidies up nicely. No, Goes down the line, looking for Motlock. Couldn't quite find him. Kept it alive, though, Motlop. Duffield wondering what he should do. He's really getting into the game now, Joel Selwood. Up to seven touches. He hasn't got Crowley, so he's got a little bit, little bit more room to move tonight. Ross Lyon and Brett Kirk in the foreground there. For the Fremantle Dockers. Real important game, this, for Fremantle. They're currently four wins and four losses, and they'd like to get ahead. And the winning percentage, Daniel Pearce to Subin. Penetrating run, back to the man that can really kick it and really run. Couple of bounces through the middle, a little chip. It was a great kick to Pearce. Now he marks Rivers almost 50 metres. I reckon it was professional the way he got him to the ground. And now Pearce finds Subin, who started it all. Gee, their, their transition run then was outstanding from Pearce. Ballantyne also ahead of the footy, pushed really hard. It's great composure too, and the kicking stakes. Not to panic, there wasn't a lot up forward. This kick from Hill was really classy, wasn't it? He looked up, there wasn't much on, so to pull it like that and wait it into the gap was really smart play. It's good by Subin to keep pushing down the ground as well. He started that at halfback. So here he is with a 45 metre kick, and he got very close to the tall McIntosh on the mark. Sandlands. Almost end right with a fumble, but the Dockers have really made this a fortress under Ross Lyon. They've won 20 of their past 22 games here at Zuby. Thank you. Fremantle and looking the early favourites in this one, although Geelong have stopped the bleeding on the scoreboard at least. Over the top, five. Geelong have gone inside 50 more. They just haven't been as efficient as the Dockers. Lockie Neal. Give it to the fluent running Hill. And once again out the corner of his eye, the little wee man, Ballantyne. Had his cheek pushed out during the week in a minor operation. and Wouldn't want to give any cheek tonight and cop a little whack there. At the moment, it's the run of Daniel Pearce and Stephen Hill that's absolutely killing Geelong. Fremantle just running through the middle part of the ground with those two players. Outstanding. Selwood. Yeah. To McIntosh, who's been a revelation this year for the Cats. Since returning from a host of injuries since arriving at the Cats. Now the switch to the open side of the ground. Silvani, the deepest of the purple defenders. Barlow and Enright go at it. Did really well, Barlow, to keep the ball in front. Waiting for someone else to ride. That is such a smart, intelligent play from Barlow. He knew exactly what he was doing. He needed some troops, and he waited. That's a great win, isn't it? A two on one down. Geelong were a chance to slingshot that one and go inside. Look at the way he played it, Barlow, because if he drags it under, he's going to get a hold of the ball. So he just patted it around, patted it around, and then took the two players off the footy. Big effort. And the boy out of Assumption College may go, may well get into their greatest all-time AFL side at Assumption that they're having next year. 120-year history there. Monday to Pavlich, and Pavlich has got a free here. Pavlich has got the free. A hole. And he says, is that for me? And the umpire, Jeff Dolby, says, yes, there's a present for your 300. Is that Harry Taylor nervous with Joe, hasn't he, Pav? He's come out of the blocks, kicked the first goal. His hands have been good in his body position. Just drew a free kick from uh, Harry Taylor, who doesn't make that sort of mistake at all. No, he doesn't. Harry rarely gets beaten in a one-on-one. -on -one. Now he's tied with Bunny on 599 goals. Not Carroll, the AFL, has kicked 600. 
Here he is for goal 600. That's 15 seconds, Matthew. Another pin on the chest of this man here. Matthew Pavlic steps to the plate. There it is. His 600th AFL goal in his 300th AFL game. Got a nice ring to that, isn't it, Richo? 300 games, 600 goals, two goals a game, along with everything else. And as you said, he's been an All-Australian fullback. There's the family. Have a look at the crowd. They're yeah. all standing up. He's got the... It's a standing ovation. Standing ovation for Pat. That is just a brilliant sight to see here. The purple haze. They're going off. Well, he's had a lot of games in the midfield, as you said, full back, half back. He's been everywhere. These are unbelievable scenes. As you boys have pointed out, the crowd has risen. No, the siren hasn't gone. We've got plenty of time. And the ground it announcer is a standing O, Richo. And an O, O, O. Look at that. Look at the company of those that have played 300 and kicked 600. The greatest names in the AFL feature there. This man just keeps rolling along. He's had the perfect start. Two goals tonight for Pavlic. And they lead by 23. More importantly, Geelong yet to kick a goal with only five minutes left in the quarter. And they've been able to just get space inside their Ford 50. Pav had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity there with Harry Taylor. Hi. That's all you want as the key forward. You don't want someone coming third man in and... He's had Harry a little bit nervous because he's had one-on-one. -on -one. What would he be feeling like at the moment, Richo, in terms of adrenaline and the way the game's gone? Oh, it must be an amazing feeling when you've got 90% of the crowd cheering for you. There's not many Geelong fans here, probably more, 95%. Well, I'll ask you that, Richo, because you often have 100% of the crowd cheering for you because you were the most loved player don't of all time. Uh, don't be silly, bro. 28th player in the history of the game to reach 600 goals. Man alongside with the big Richo man, 800. Right. Didn't play down in the back line like Pav did for years, though, that's so true. that's an extraordinary effort. Yeah. All Australian as a half back, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Back inside again, so Fremantle are relentless here at the oh. moment. Through goes Maine. Mackey, Kelly under enormous pressure and has great composure to Selwood. Wilson Simpson. Oh. Selwood again, so Geelong are held up at their defensive end here at the moment, Mackey. Enright, Motlop looking to bust them open with some strong running, didn't get through Johnson's fancy footwork now, can they get him on the rebound here? Mundy goes wide, good opportunity here for Duffield, 60 out closing, here he is the superstar again, a little heavy and high for him on that occasion. And now Kelly to release out the opposite side. Now only one man has kept the Cats goalless in a first quarter in recent years, and that's Ross Lyon. He did it once when he was coaching St Kilda, and once at the Dockers already, and on track to do it again here. Darfield and Mzungu got up 30 out, directly in front, goal number five on offer. He's been good too, Mzungu. He's finding some room inside 50. He's lining up for his second goal now. They're under siege. He's got a great setup behind the footy. That's why they're getting multiple chances like this. And when you get a multiple inside 50s in a row, generally someone gets out like Mzungu. See the fr frowns on those in the Geelong yeah. coaching box. They look deeply concerned. And why wouldn't they be? This for a 29-point lead nearing the end of the first quarter. Mzungu, very efficient by footy, misses on yeah, that occasion. It's a bad miss, that. I, without getting too far ahead, I mean, there's been some great comebacks, but at home, perhaps 300, this crowd, it just felt like that was going to be a long, long way back from that goal. And if the Cats can pinch one here now... And you know Geelong can score quickly. Yeah. They always have that ability. So, Mackie White... Well, Pierce there. Pretty open game, though, isn't it? There's the Crowley-Johnson matchup. Only been 20 tackles in this first quarter. A high-paced game. Stevie J just to five possessions. Fife. Good smother Simpson. Fife again. 
does. I've enjoyed all this conversation about goal kicking feats, and obviously Matty Pavlich well deserved the 600 goals. Mentioned Richo's 800 goals. I was just waiting for BT to uh, chime in with his uh, tally of goals. It just didn't come when I thought it was going to, Brian. Uh, not in that company, uh, thank you, Lingy. <laughs> Simpson. How many for you, Bristol? Oh, look. Off the top of your head? 500 odd. Oh, you know exactly. Maybe pushing up to 600, I think. But, uh, <laughs> no, look, come on. This is about Pab tonight. Opportunity. Here's Zach Clark. Inside 50 again. Pavlich underneath it. Harry Taylor drops the mark. Now Mackie under real Ballantyne pressure. Can they lock it in here? Kelly's got to be great here. He is so far. Spun midair. Pirouette around nothing, but he got rid of it. And now the boundary umpire indicates out of bounds. Chris Main worked so hard defensively. It was his chase then that, that forced that ball out of out of bounds off Kelly. That's his uh, that's his A game main, his pressure. Great shot of Ross Lyon there, and you can see the stats in the background, these rocket stats that get fed into the coach's box that light up red if a player's causing them concern. Free kick here. See just in the back right there, that screen full of rocket stats and red lights, green lights, depending on what's happening with particular players and and statistics. So Mazunga gets another look. There might be a lot of red lights going off in the Fremantle box. It'll all be positives and the numbers are just going to be so good uh, Fremantle's way, Richo. Yeah, there'll be a red light on the clearances at the moment. Does 13 to 4, the clearances. Fremantle's Fremantle's way. Way. That's wow. why they've been able to Dominate. Dominate. Now, he missed an easy one 50s. a moment ago. This is a 45 degree angle from 45, as you can see. He connects well, and that's a goal. So five first quarter goals for Fremantle. Well, this has just been extraordinary. We couldn't have asked for a better start to a big occasion here for the Fremantle Dockers. And not very often you see the Cats shell shot, and they just haven't got the answers at the moment. Look at the free kick. Yeah, maybe just went on with the tackle a little bit too long there. James Kelly, I've seen them let go, but technically that's probably the goal. And they're punishing them. He missed one, Mazungu, but kicked probably the harder one. And Well, they've got a massive, massive challenge from here, the Cats. It's a great feather in the cap of Ross Lyon's defensive ability and strategy, isn't it? To keep a team that is such an attacking yeah. team goalless. I mean, that's just an amazing thing. As I said, he's the only coach to do it. Yeah. He's done it twice, once with St Kilda, and this will be the second time if the Cats don't get one in the next 40 seconds. We just saw Chris Scott uh, moving the mat magnets around on the matchup board there, and you can see him again. A big worry for him is Hamish McIntosh, only the one possession. Tom Hawkins, yet to touch it. Travis Varco, yet to touch it. Three key players who they need to get into this game if they're going to be any chance of coming back. I don't think I've seen Tommy Hawkins involved in a contest no. so far no, in the I think first quarter. Right. His main trying to crash his way inside through. Probably, probably not his fault. They're only 10 inside 50s. It's, they've back, gone to Bartell, I reckon, four out of those times they've gone in. So Hawkins just hasn't been able to attract the ball. So let's see if he can get it here. Zach Dawson, his direct opponent. McIntosh will look to just kick it over the top with a short one to Duncan. Now... The loose oh. man's Michael Johnson, BT, yeah. and he's so good at getting the right spot. He, he's deep in the square here now, and he just says pop it up in the square, but there won't be time. Have a listen to this. The Purple Hayes are going to be up and about here, I'm telling you now. They stand and rise, and they congratulate Matthew Pavlich on 600 goals and 300 games and two first quarter goals. Look at them stand. It's a sea of purple here at Patterson Stadium, and that man has set them alight. Quarter time, and it's a 30-point Fremantle Dockers lead.